working at the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. But one of the species we keep getting asked about all the time, when are you going to do a film about the tench? Now, for those of you worldwide who might not know, the tench is a summertime fish here in the UK. Summertime? Yeah, we don't get too much of that, do we? It doesn't last very long. But generally in June, July, maybe a bit of August as well, the tench is at its peak. They're a lake fish, still water fish, great fighters. They don't take lures, they take bait. And I'm going to hopefully be able to go out and show you how to catch them. Let's get down to a still water and see what we can find out. Well, I'm down here on the lake now. It's a lovely gravel pit. I'm outside Fairford and in Gloucestershire. As I say, lovely looking water is gin clear and about 22 acres. And with me is Lee, the fishery manager. Lee, just tell us something about this fishery and what sort of stock it's got. Well, it's quite a highly stocked runs of water with around uh, a thousand carp in here. Um, it's also a good mixed fishery. Got plenty of big tench, a lot of big bream, some good sized perch to well over three pound. Um, the pike, they also go into the high 20s. We've got a good mixture of different strains of carp in here. Leanies, Suttons, Leanies crossed with dinks. They range from all sizes, sort of low doubles right up to 38, 39 pound. The carp, they, they come out on all types of methods. PVA bags work quite well, along with big beds of bait, um, where a number of fish can be caught. This is our main lake. Um, we've got around 50 swims on here, so there's always plenty of room for day tickets. We've also got three other lakes. We've got a syndicate lake, also two match lakes, which are full of small carp and uh, plenty of silvers. Um, it's, it's a gravel pit, so it's quite weedy, but nearly every swim has got clear areas. The average depth is between four to six foot. Um, so there's something there to suit everyone. It's quite important to walk around the lake first. You'll, you'll always find the carp shoaled up somewhere. Um, a lot of people just turn up and fish the car park and don't very don't normally do very well. But if you have a good walk around, find the fish. They're always quite easy to catch. They do follow the wind a lot as well. Um, if the wind's blowing into you. That's always a good sign. You don't need to distance fish. Um, they they come quite close in. As long as you're on the fish, you'll catch them at all ranges. PVA bags work quite well with um, short rigs, sort of two or three inches long. If you're fishing over bait, I'd go for a slightly longer rig, sort of six to eight inches, maybe with a little snowman, sit it on top of the weed, that works quite well. The, they do like white pop-ups quite a lot. Um, a lot of the fish fall to them quite often, especially pink as well. Um, but like I said, the main thing is finding the fish. Once you're on the fish, they're quite easy to, to catch. Just get your, get your bait in the right place and then um, you sure catch them. Well, now on the tench, I'm here fishing for the tench. Uh, I'm going to go through the night tonight and see if we can't pick something up. Uh, what would be your recommended technique? You know, how would you fish this for tench? I'd probably um, make sure I had the wind sort of blowing in my face as long as it's a warm wind. You don't need to fish far out, sort of 30, 40 yards. Put quite a bit of bait out, maggots, worms, uh, ground bait, a few pellets. Uh, now the other thing is you mentioned about bream and I thought they're going to be three or four pound these bream but you say they're a totally different animal in this water. Yeah there's a lot of uh, double figure bream uh, if you catch one under 10 you're, you're quite unlucky um, sort of most of them average sort of 10 to 12 13 pound which is um, quite a regular thing. Do they bother the carp anglers much I mean they're that big or not? Um, they might catch one or two but the carp anglers are quite happy to catch them really at that sort of size. Yeah, I've never seen one of the 10 pound bream in my life, so that would be quite an event, I have it's to a, say. A big old fish. And anything else in there? Roach, anything like that? Small um, fish? There, there's a lot of rud, uh, a lot of good perch, which get caught quite a lot um, to the tench anglers with fish and worm and stuff. They they catch quite a few of the big perch. And they, and they will be averaging, what, a couple of pounds a piece, something like those? Yeah, there's quite a few around the sort of two, two and a half pound mark. Um, there's quite a few come out over three. We've had. Um, a 314 out this year so that's quite a big fish for the for the lake and also what facilities you've got a car park for anglers here and it's all gated isn't it it's, it's a gated complex yeah, toilets it's all locked up um, it's all secure we've got toilets so it is wind in my face even though i think it's a bit nippy you think i'm in the right place you're definitely in the right spot um it's one of the known tench pegs this one um although it's been a bit quiet at the moment i'm sure sort of come early evening you're bound to have a few Brilliant. Okay, Lee, thank you very much for the information and I hope the guys found that of interest. Well, thanks to Lee for telling us what is actually in here. The wind is now, in fact, I don't think I've seen this for many years, has gone from blowing on my back where I had the umbrella trying to keep the wind off the mic. I thought, what a nice, comfortable night I'm going to have. 
wrong. It's gone absolutely round about 90 degrees. It's blowing straight on the nose here. Good for fishing, allegedly. Wind in the face, that's what they always say. But not so good for staying up all night sitting in the chair. And it's howling. It's getting up towards the force five, which is giving me little false beeps. So the curse of the camera strikes again. But you never know. I'm in the right place. I'm in the right swim. Let's hope I've got the right bait. And I just hope the odd tench shows up because they are very untench like conditions as I speak. Tell you how long it has been coming, guys. <laughs> Just uh, a guy come up and say about the tench. And I've got a small tench here, and he had 30 tench. It's taken me five hours. It looks like I've got one. It's about a pound. But right species, <gasps> right species, wrong size. Maybe they're just moving in. This is a small male fish, I think. Fish number two on this time guys, on worm, just with the tip bait, but very very tweaky bites. I don't think it's a big fish, bigger than the last one, that's the main thing. And hopefully right species. Just try and keep it away from the other line. It's one thing about tench fishing I do miss, they dig and dig and dig. It's sort of like a short fat green barbel. Got him turned and I'm, I'm keeping the reel now just on back wind so I can maintain a bit of pressure. Oh yeah, it's a bit more like it guys. A bit more like it. There he is. What we call a proper tench. Look at that one, lovely fish. On the feeder. There's the feeder hanging out. Seems to have woken up now. There he is. This has been a long time appearing on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, people. It is a nice big tent. There you go, that's a nice. That's a nice tench. It's slipping over on it now. That has to be possibly on the way to five pounds. Certainly for 12-ish, something like that. What a beauty. Let's get it back. Now, all that waiting is worthwhile because this is like almost a green carp. I'm totally wrong, guys. I've, I thought it looked a bit big. I put it on the spring balance. <laughs> well, that was an extra, extra result. Five pounds, eight ounces. Beautiful one. And the first big tent we've got on the Turtle from Fishing Show. Hopefully, there'll be another one. I know it's hard When I'm gone Eventually, the wind did act 
much. Well, it just died down flat, Carmen. It was superb. Even the ducks came out and stopped all that bobbing around looking for where my ground bait was going. A scene like this is a classic for anybody who enjoys tench fishing. Loads of insects started coming out in the evening and just look at the size of this. 20 acres, not a breath of wind. Hard to believe that literally one hour prior to this I had it pounding in my face. Now, as the sun was going down in the sky, I really did start to think, hang on, I might be in for a little bit of better fishing. Would they come on the bite? Well, we always live in hope, don't we as fishermen? Now as for looking for where you're going to target, look on the horizon here and you'll see the, the outline of the bushes reflected in trees as two notches, it's like an upside down W. There's two shiny patches, one on the left, you can see a V cut in, it's a white shiny patch and over on the, on the right is another white shiny patch. I'm going to use those, they're about eight feet apart as my target and there's the two notches in the outlines in the skyline this is the sort of thing you need for making a sort of target to cast it because the horizon the trees the reflections are not moving you need to be able to find something that's not moving and gives you a reflection on the other side so you can see in the water and also at night you can see against the skyline that v guys i just dropped a worm down in the margins i just saw some swirling about there might be worth been washing my bucket out. I thought, what if there's a carp? So I free line a worm down there with one BB. <laughs> and the rod nearly took off. God, that light's bright. God, I might just tune that down a minute. There's planes landing around the minute. First chance I get with this carp, I'm gonna I'm gonna land it. I'm gonna net it if I can, if I get that far. I think my reel's jammed totally. It back winds. It's just my spot reel. What on God's name's happened to it? I think the gears have collapsed. How am I gonna get this fish in? Just a sort of hand on it, I think. <laughs> the hook fell out, but we still got the fish. Guys, that was an unbelievable piece of luck. I'd only just landed that tench, put the tench back in the water, and I just thought, I'm just going to free down that worm again. Put it down, got the rod and the rest. Wait, wait. Not a big carp, but that's a bonus fish. Definitely a bonus fish. For me, anyway. There we go. So that's a couple of tench over five pounds. Really nice carp. And it's only just got dark and the wind's dropped. Could you ask for better? Really pleased with that one, guys. Bonus fish always are a little bit sweeter. Not to eat, that is. Although in some countries, of course. <clears throat> People have been woken from my slumbers by the margin rod nearly going like the rest again. Free line. Worms with a BB hook on. And it's, I can't tell you, it's barely under the rod top. Man, did that wake me up. It was absolutely single toning. Again, not a monster fish, but a bone. And the other reel was jammed up, so it's just what I'm using. This one I've changed over now. A bit lighter line, though. Now that, to be honest, was all from just looking and noticing where I'd washed out a bucket just down the corner there. Just as it was getting dark, I saw there some shapes there. That's not a bad fish. <laughs> we don't want to lose this one. We do not want to lose this one. About eight pounds, I think. Probably 11, 
11, 12 ish, something like that. Beautiful fish, and what a scrap it gave me. And what a wake up call at close to midnight. I'm going to slide this one back for you. Hopefully, you can get a bit better. I get the head torch as well. Let's see if we can get that in. The wall is so clear here, you should be able to see this cut. There we go, people. That is not bad, that fish. Gently sink that. There it goes. On again, guys, this time. Casting father out with a feeder. Got to be a tent. Up this one. That was a fish about four pounds. Maybe a tad bigger. There we go. That saves me. Taking him all the way to the mat and I can unhook him in the water there. Lovely, lovely. Prime or cut tench. Okay, so he woke me up at midnight, but it was worth. Well, as you can see, I'm reclining at dawn, freezing cold, having stayed up the entire night in just a sun lounger and an umbrella. No busy for me. I've had seven tench. Had three carp. Unfortunately, what's happened is the swans have been feeding over the other side, and there's a breeze, and it's pushed all the weed that they've chewed up right in front of my swim. So I'm actually now putting my rod up high. I've got one up high, and I've got one down in close, trying to avoid that weed. So who knows what's going to happen? I just had one or two little taps. That's all. This is the time the tent should be kicking off. Apparently not at the moment, unless it's because of this weed. Beautiful morning, beautiful morning. It is ten past four in the morning and I'm wide awake. Well guys, putting that rod up high to get out of the weed seems to have done the trick. I've lost two more carp down the margins here, but I've got another tench on. And that's putting out and putting the rod up high. Still on the buzzer, luckily. There's a bit of scope there for uh, a high rod rest and a single buzzer, I think. Just to get away from the weed that's drifted. So it's like another nice fish. Quite a bit of weed up the line, so always take a bit of care when you bring the fish in. Extra weight can actually uh, snap a hook link or pull a hook free. Come on, fish. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. There he goes, there he goes. Still living every day In a positive way I know it's hard Well guys, the mist has come in again. Now I really am stuffed for uh, finding my mark. Because even if I clip down with a spool, which gives me the distance, I don't know that's all right. It's totally fogged out now. It's just really, really thick. But I'm, I've got a bite there now. What I've done is put the rod dress up high to get away from this weed. And as you've seen, I have actually caught tench like that. I've never done this before. I'll pop back to the car and I've got my extending one. Okay, so it just twists, locks, extends. 
I'm going to try and put that up like you would beech rods, quite high. And then if I put it towards myself like this, the little channels that the line goes across in the buzzer will at least trip the buzzer. Because otherwise, if you can imagine, you've got the buzzer like this, the line's going through here, and all of a sudden you're putting it at an angle, it's not going to curve up and over the, the buzzer, you know, the sensor there. So I think if I do that, at least that way, I've got two ways of seeing a bite. One, right against this fog, because it's now dawn, I can see the tip start to pull, that gives me an idea, and if I do have to look away, I've got the buzzer as well. I might get a double worry, <laughs> I know it could work, because I've got little, little tweaks here at the moment that aren't even registered on the buzzer. Here we go. What can, I, what can I say? Totally awesome. Is on with the camera still running and a rod up high. My goodness. Please don't say there's two on there. I've got a feeling I've got my other line. I would think. Now, that's the other problem you see. Oh, he's just come off. Just bumped him off. Um, that's the other problem you see. I can't see how far apart I'm casting my swim feeders. But there, you've seen it works. There's the weed that he dumped me in. And it was a tension, I assure you. We'll give it a go and see if we can't at least winkle one more tench out. At the moment is tench eight and carp three. So good little night session. I might even pick with this fog up, this mist, another one or two up before the tench called it time. I'd like to get them on this high rod anyway. Assume the position. Another tench on. A big gap between the last one. The fog is thick. Keeping the rods up high resulted in the fish hooking himself. And also no line bites anyway. There's a wee starting to disappear a little bit. We're not getting any line bites. I have a feeling this is going to burn off this fog. Kiss of death, I think it's going to go then. Here he comes. Oh, nice fish too. guys had a very eventful night and now Ben Kennedy who's group secretary of the Tench Fishers specialist group concentrating on you know the catching really of and pursuit of the Tench it's a very historic club he's going to talk about it later on but before he does and before the ripple comes on the water I want to show you how close these carp are right almost under a rod top just about I want to say six feet out and about two feet of water and three of the fish I caught from there came that close, really that close last night. And there's some fish down there, I guess, look about six, seven pounds, something like that. They may be bigger, but so close, mouth-watering. And what I've done, I've loose-fed maggots in there, and it normally drives them balmy, but also makes them quite difficult to catch as it gets selective and preoccupied. But I'm pretty sure I've got... Uh, two maggots on, I might have to drop to a single maggot to actually get a take. In the meantime, my other rod's fishing for the tench, and Ben's, now he's putting more bait in, we're gonna go and see if we can't uh, pick up some more of those tench. Well, Ben's come round to net to a tench for me. Had a little quiet spell. I got lured by the dark side, the carp, on, the, on that area that I baited up. And now I've put my two rods straight out, and it seems to have paid off. Now, normal circumstances for me, years ago, this would be the kiss of death. The sun on the water, you'd be going home now. But here, for some reason, and it's always like this, you say, but it's always yeah, I've, a, I've caught throughout the day. There's always a chance. There we go. That's a nice tench. That's a good tench. There we go, that Graham. Lovely tench you just had. 
nice female probably three to four pounds you think i'd say so yeah now that's slightly thinner is that because you think it's spawned out yeah it's a bit empty here you can, if you actually touch her you can feel she's not you know she's hollow really and that would have been a week <laughs> week or ten days ago with yeah that? probably last hot spell we had was probably yeah a week ten days maybe two weeks ago so so they should be done with the spawning yeah i mean we're, we're looking now we're, we're just coming in the first week in july yeah. they come back on the feed now after being um after spawning because they need to build their weight back up so she's um a bit empty but she's obviously <laughs> hungry for some of your bait oh i don't care i don't mind <laughs> brilliant yeah let's just see that one go just away right it's just so clear right. it's unbelievable Whoosh. <laughs> no problems with that one well it's just tidied up my swim <laughs> and the other rod went off exactly as we put that fish back and ben's taking this one wow You've obviously got them feeding because <laughs> this one's flown off. Feels a decent sized fish, nothing nothing ma you know, massive, but it's, it's typical tench fight, slow, steady, and then bursts of speed and power. Yeah, he's gone. He knows there's a tree over there he can get in. If, um... He's certainly digging this one. Yeah. I think he's acting out for the camera myself. <laughs> it's always different playing that on someone else's rods as well, but I'm not going to. Look a gift horse in the mouth, Graham. Absolutely. Fish is a fish is a fish. Exactly. It's got that telltale oh. swirl and boil. It's typical actually here. You quite often get one or two in quick succession. I've had it before and I've had two tension in the nets. It's a lovely fishery, Hawcock. Here we go. There she is. Looks like another nice female, that one. Yeah, that'll That's do. Brilliant. That'll do nicely. When I'm gone But I'll be back someday To keep searching for a life It's a rut It's a rut <laughs> I've never had a single rut here before, look at that This is a first for you First for me, a rut on where? Nice rut actually That's not a bad rut at all oh, My first, let's give a wash off oh. First rod in years. What a lovely stone size rod that is. So a bit of an unknown quantity in here for sort of I've heard roach, rod, roach and rod and stuff. But I've never experienced them in the times I've been here. But if that's the average stamp, that's a... Yeah, nice size fish. Yeah, I've not had a rod like that for years actually. I don't get them so much these days. What am I neck of the woods? It was then that Ben hooked into something that was painfully obvious. It was not a tench, and it was heading fast and hard for the trees. Is he clear? Oh, he's still, he's still close. He's absolutely going for it. You can't be far from uh, getting him out. Might be a good carp, that one. Yeah. It shelves quite deep in just here. Yeah. Oh, he got him out, yeah? Oh, it's a good one. No, I thought you uh, might have been a goner. He's still going there, isn't he? He's still trying to get to the, Lovely watching in this to the snag. It's tiring now. It's just... They know where those snags are, though, don't they? That was just, you could see him want to get back in there again. Well done, that man. Oh, I thought I was going to lose that for a second. Oh, I thought he was gone, to be honest, when he was in that tree. Sometimes they get in and you just cannot get them out. Uh, I was lucky to a point. Oh, God, I've got the rod on the I was lucky to a point there, but I think we'll get him on the scales, Graham. What do you have to do? I'll get out there. There we go. It's my first carp from Hawcott. Um, my previous trips have only ever caught attention. This is the first carp I've had today. Or oh, whatever. Um, lovely common. Nearly lost it in the trees. Yeah, you're lucky to get that one I was. out. I was. At one point I thought I, she was a goner, but I managed to just turn it around and get that line off the branch. And it's my reward, a lovely dark, lovely common. And Not a tench, one. but at the same time. Ah, it's good scrap though, isn't it? Good scrap. Yeah. Bit of an epic battle. That's it. It's one of the reasons I always bring a big mat and a bigger net as well, just in case. Just in case, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, if you pick one up, you don't want to lose it or not be able no. to look after it on the bank if you do get it. So.
Ten Swishers was formed in 1954. Uh, last year we celebrated our 60th anniversary and the Tench Fishers ultimately is a group for people who love Tench and Tench Fishing. Um, members are split into regions, every region has its own regional officer and each year we have regional fishings as well as national fishings. Uh, the members all get together socially as well um, and twice a year we have two, uh, twice a year we have meetings, uh, an annual general meeting and a spring general meeting, typically April and November. Membership is £25 a year and for that you get two magazines um, or bulletins which are A4 glossy um, and very high quality. All the content is written by our members for our members. It's not published elsewhere um, and it's it's a real insight into modern day tench fishing um, as well as some historical articles just for interest. Um, we also have our internet site tenchfishers.com and members have access to our private forum tenchtalk.net. It's a site where members can go online, post questions, answer questions, contribute to discussions and debate. But it's all very friendly. It's none of the um, sometimes the moaning and stuff you get on other websites. It's very friendly. And that's the key to the group. The Tench Fishers is a very sociable, friendly, open organisation and anyone who loves Tench and Tench Fishing should consider joining. You'll get to meet like-minded individuals. Um, I've made many great friends since I joined the group. Um, you will pick up so much information, you'll learn tips and just ideas that will change the way you look at your tench fishing and hopefully catch you more tench. Some of our members um, target small tench, some of them target big tench. We've had members this year catch tench to over £14. But at the same time the group is not solely about specimen tench, it's about tench as a, as a species. It's the tench being them small or large, we love them all um, and we just want to promote tench and tench fishing. Guys we're in a totally awesome mess because we got one fish hooked up, and then as we were talking, I'm glad I said the bobbin went up. We're, we're, we're like fighting now. <laughs> the position. There we go. Well, I can go and we got this. a double hook up. Let's go up the left for this one. Oh. It's a nice position to be. <laughs> Do it once, eh? Although I've done on my own, for goodness sake. That's not a bad fish, you've got to work over the top of you. That's a male, that's one. That, why that one shot off like it did. Right, now if I put that on there. I can try and, oh, I'm out there, sorry. We can try and get two of that one, then. Yeah, it's been done before, but not with tension. I haven't done it with tension. Oh, I've done it a couple of times, here we go. Hey, there we go, brilliant. We get to show you a brace of tension. This is really interesting here, this brace of tension we've got, Graham. We've got both a male tench here. And you can tell it's a male, if you look here, you've got the pronounced pelvic lump, and also the, um, the pelvic fins here, the muscle, or sorry, the fin, is much thicker than on this female here. If you compare her like for like, her thin, the first ray here is much, much thinner. This is much thicker here, and obviously she doesn't have the pelvic lump here. Um, that's a beautiful brace of tench. Both in beautiful condition. Um, again, probably three to four pounds. Um, looks like the female may have spawned recently. She's a little bit empty. Her pelvic, or her vent I should say, is um, protruding. Um, the male seems a little bit more Battle ready, it's got a slightly split fin there, but all in all, beautiful brace of tench. to be strong alone or by each other's sides if what we feel is true then keep on searching through this misty haze yeah. this misty haze Right, now what I'm going to be using is an 11 foot Avon rod. That is just a one and a quarter pound test curve uh, rod. It's got a full cork handle, purely, because I like full cork. I think it's six pound pro gold the line and a regular fixed ball reel on the business end. I'm using 
Real old school, a straight running ledger like that. There's my hook link, which is the same main line. I'm not going to use any small hook links here, because don't forget, you can get a big tench, or you can get even a small, medium-sized carp. I've got a bunch of worms on a size 10 partridge specialist hook there. But what I have got to stop the feeder coming down is a small barrel swivel, because I don't want to put a shot or a plastic stop there, because I, I do get, if you do cast hard and you've got a biggest feeder, sometimes it skids and slips. So I've got a small barrel swivel there, and that's my stop, if you can just see that like that. Ground bait in the feeder, this is just regular cage feeder, open-ended cage feeder. It is a real mix, sweet corn, red and white maggots, some of those two mil, um, so I call them ground bait pellets, they're just carp pellets, I guess they're fairly bland and plain, and some stuff called green betaine. Now I don't know what it does, but we've been quite successful with that in the last three or four trips. So I'm quite happy with it. The main thing is with the ground bait, do not overwet it. Just get it damp. In contrast, if you're on a, a long session on a sunny day, it's going to stop binding into, uh, into your feeder if you let it dry out too much. So just damp it now and then, and that's all I'm using. Just a straight running ledger like that. This is a nice bonus fish to pick up on the tench rigs. Um, this is only about a pound, but they do go up to about three and a half in here in Hawcott. Um, and it makes a nice change when you're tench fishing to catch one of these beautiful. Feeder fishing for tench, um, typically a rod between a pound and a half and a pound and three till quarter test curve will serve um, perfectly well for most situations. Now, unless you're going long range, you don't really need a heavy rod. A pound and a half to a pound and three quarters will get you the distance you need to go for tench. Really, most tench fishing can be 30 to 40 yards out maximum. Um, and you'll be casting feeders around two to three ounces, um, and that's why you need that little bit of power and lower down the rod. Okay, when feeder fishing for tench, you want a good size reel that's going to hold a decent amount of 10 pound line. Uh, 5,000 size reel and a bait runner or free spool reel is preferable. Um, you Casting a feeder all day long and retrieving puts a lot of strain on reel, so you want something that's reliable. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but you need, with all, all tackle, you need something that's going to last you and be able to put through a lot of stress and strain from casting a feeder all day. It's worth remembering that a lot of big carp, fish over 40 pounds, are caught every year um, on tench, tackled by tench anglers. But ultimately, it's important A, to use gear that will cast the feeder, but by using 10 pound line um, and pound and a half to pound and three quarter test gear rods, you give yourself a good chance of landing that bonus fish should you hook one. We light up the floor, move it together. Just had a call from Paul Davidson. He's uh, fishing last night as well, and I saw his buzzers and lights go. So I know he's had some fishing. He's got one in the daylight here. He's going to show us. He just caught it. Give us an idea of the sample of the fish. So what did you get this one on, Paul? This was in a white pop-up in a bag. 
Ooh. And that distance close in or? Uh, about 50 yards I'd say. Just punched into the weed with a PVA bag. I can actually hear your PVA bag going in last night. It sounded like a Waitrose bag. I don't know how much you, <laughs> I don't know how much you put in there. That's a lovely looking fish though, isn't that? Yeah. And what would be your biggest out of this lake? I've only really just started fishing this lake, to be fair. Yeah. I normally go on the syndicate one. And what, what size are you getting from the whole complex? Um, say the average stamp's about 15 to 20. So good size fish then? Yeah. A lot bigger in here though. Uh, what do they run to, you think, with some of the big ones in here? There's the 38 mirror, 40 pound common. A 40? Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's lots that still haven't been, still haven't been bagged yet. All right, let's get a shot of that one going back. Nice fish, well yeah. done. Now, for the benefit of people living abroad who don't know uh, nor have ever seen a tench before, it's called Tinker Tinker in Latin, and it's also known as the doctor fish because the slime or mucus is very, very slippery all over it, and it's said to have some healing properties in it. Now, I don't know whether it cures whooping cough, AIDS, the Black Death, Death Watch Beetle Woodworm, I don't know what it cures. But they say it does. I'm not saying go and get yourself a tension, rub it all over your acne. I'm not saying it's going to cure it. But I'm just telling you, historically, they did say years ago that it did have medicinal qualities. Just a little bit of interest for you, and it's a fish well worth pursuing. Your eyes, your eyes don't lie. It's clear to me. You're teasing me, why? We're lost. We're lost in the night. This is Tinker Tinker by the Tench Fishers, a book about this wonderful species here, the Tench. It's an insight into the modern Tench fishing scene and also contains history, bait, info, rigs. It's just a concise account of tench fishing by the modern tench fishers. Um, if anyone is interested in tench and tench fishing, this is the book for them. It's available directly from my website, tenchfishers.com. Oh, and I have a run. And he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna tow her. <laughs> that wasn't gonna go like that. All right, hold on. This is totally awesome uh, fishing. <laughs> I'm gonna return this fish oh. and I'll you want to, I'll put this one back, shall I? Yeah, put it back. I'll see what I'll That's a lovely fish too, which is not a million miles away for five pounds. And that was honestly as it happened. Right. <laughs> there we go. Uh, <laughs> teach me to not putting the rod back properly next time. Do you realise that you wouldn't have got that if you hadn't been reading that book? No. You no. must have read everything in that book. <laughs> no, it's, the book is a fantastic way. That's the sort of success that book gets you. Yeah. It's a fantastic way to celebrate the tench. Yeah, let me just go and get the net for you. Oh, it's lovely. Look at it in that sunlight. That is superb fish. Tell you what, come here. I need the old John Wilson. You've got him. Yeah. What a beautiful fish. That's why I love tench and tench fishing. They are totally awesome. Here you go, look, this is a prime example of a beautiful tench and the main reason why we joined the tench fishers, a love for this wonderful species.
trapped in space Still living every day In a positive way When I'm gone 